Keith in Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome to the line of fire. Good afternoon, Dr. Brown. Good afternoon. I recently was part of a group where a coworker started this group with the intent of uh, a couple fellows at work having some iron sharpening time together each, uh, each week. And this is a guy who I've known for many years, a, a godly man, and he revealed to us that he and his family have become Torah-observant Christians. And this is something he feels very strongly about and believes it is a necessity. And we've looked at some of Paul's writings where it discusses uh, continuing to obey the law. And my, my question to you is, is, what are your thoughts about this? Is this something that you really believe is necessary uh, to achieve? salvation. He's on a very dangerous path, a very dangerous path that could ultimately lead to him completely denying Yeshua and even converting to Judaism. The moment you say it is necessary, it is required, you are in very serious error. And this is what happens. People realize that they've had a reaction against the law, that they look at the law as evil, whereas Paul said it's holy, just, and good. They see that Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill. And they begin to think, well, you know, what about Sabbath? Who made it Sunday? Fair question. And what, well, I mean, why should I eat food that God said is unclean? That's another question, but, you know, that come, and then goes on. Next thing people think in order to please God, you know, it says, hey, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, that means all 613 as opposed to what Jesus was saying in context, if you love me, keep my commandments, then the things I'm saying to you, love one another as I've loved you, and, and so on, you know, follow in my footsteps uh, and, and, and listen to my commands. And, and then they begin to think, okay, it's, I, I need to start living under the law. And then they start to think it's required to live under the law. And then they think others are required to. And I've watched it. You know, I've, I've been in the Lord almost 50 years now. And as a Jewish believer, I've seen this for years. I'll, I'll get the letters. In the old days, the letters, now the emails, Dr. Brown, what do I do? My husband or my wife or my kids have renounced Yeshua. They no longer believe in him. And, you know, and so the, the fact is we are not under the Sinai covenant in the New Testament. And God takes the new covenant and writes his laws on our hearts. And that is what's reflected in the New Testament writings. And in other words, if, if you're going to be under the law and Torah observant, then, then you need to be advocating for the rebuilding of the temple so that there can be animal sacrifices again. Well, if you're saying that, then you are nullifying the work of the cross, saying we need animal sacrifices again. And I've watched, I mean, I've watched with concern people fall into this more and more. Yeshua is no longer central. Torah becomes central. They will not be sharing their faith to lead people to Jesus. They'll be trying to get people to observe Torah. You will see a lack of worship in their lives in terms of, hey, you know, can we sing one of those hymns that just, you know, really lifts up Jesus? No, I, you know, because they start to go in a different direction. Then they start to kind of find Jewish identity. They start to dress like Jews. Give it enough time, the guy will start wearing a yarmulke, even though it's got nothing to do with the Bible. It's just Jewish custom. Um, it's, it's one thing to say, hey, you know, God never changed this Sabbath, so I'm not going to keep it on the seventh day. Great. One, God bless you. And, you know, why eat certain foods? Maybe there's a reason God said they're unclean. Fine. The New Testament makes clear that they don't affect us spiritually. They don't defile us spiritually. But fine. If you don't want to eat, great. I don't. You know, great. Good for you. That's totally different than saying that God requires Gentile Christians to observe the law. Uh, and and the, the bottom line is there are 101 ways they don't observe it. You know, are they going to stone a, a disobedient, rebellious uh, child? Do, do the women live by, by every purity law that's there? And, you know, they pick and choose for the most part. Uh, you sit down with a religious Jew that examines their lives, they'll tell them you keep only a fraction of the laws. So it's a very dangerous uh, road. And you watch it. If you're really close to them, you may not see it, obviously. But if you didn't see the person for a year or two, when you see them, uh, unless they, they get their bearings and start going in the right direction, it's going to be real trouble. And that's the reason that Paul wrote Galatians, because that was, a, that was a heretical view that they fell into. And Paul called them foolish and said, you've fallen from grace. So it's, it's very serious. 
Thank you very much. I think the intent was very good behind his uh, reason for doing it, but I certainly understand a little more now where you're coming from, and it does help me to figure out how I want to respond to him whenever he uh, brings these things up. So I appreciate the uh, input from you. Thank yeah, you very and, much. And, and listen, I'm not saying he's there yet, but if he keeps going this way and says it's mandatory or God wants this or says to you something's wrong with your life because you're not doing it, he's, he's already crossed a dangerous line. If he brings it up, unless you can help him, you know, uh, see things better, understand things better, you know, go through Hebrews with him, go through Galatians with him. Um, but in, unless unless he uh, is willing to hear, if he brings things up, best say, hey, I, let's just talk about Jesus. Oh, no, you can't talk about Jesus without talking about Torah. You'll see where the focus is. And then he'll read Galatians, completely turn it upside down in its meaning. And anyway, I've, I've watched it happen way too many times. And just uh, one, one passage I want to read to you from Colossians, the second chapter. There is a warning there uh, about people putting these Gentile believers under pressure to observe the Sabbath or, or the like. And, and look at this very interesting thing Paul says in, in Colossians, the second chapter, uh, verse 16. Therefore, don't let anyone judge you regard to food and drink or in the matter of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. In other words, don't let them put you under pressure. You keep the moon, you got to do this, that. These are a shadow of what was to come. The substance is the Messiah. Let no one disqualify you insisting on ascetic practices and the worship of angels, claiming access to a visionary realm and inflate it without cause by his unspiritual mind. He doesn't hold on to the head from whom the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons develops with growth from God. If you die with the Messiah to the elemental forces of this world, why do you live as if you still belonged to the world? Why do you submit to the regulations? Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. All these regulations refer to what is destroyed by being used up there, commands and doctrines of men. So the key thing is holding on to the head. Hey, thank you for the call. Let me say this one last thing. Jewish believers who feel called in particular, to live in deeper identification with their people and who say, hey, God never changed the calendar. Why shouldn't we celebrate the death and resurrection of Messiah in the midst of Passover? Why should we separate it as a separate holiday called Easter? Why shouldn't we meet on, on Saturday in our congregations for our, for our worship and adoration instead of Sunday? Wonderful. God bless you. And if you're a Gentile Christian, say, I love to worship with our Messianic Jewish friends and join in as one in Yeshua and recover our Jewish roots. Wonderful. That is very different from saying that in order to be pleasing and right in God's sight, you must observe the Torah. You must come under the Sinai covenant, or the new covenant is just the Sinai covenant written on our hearts. Those are very, very different positions.